In this video, we're going to discuss how to make a good argument. On the MCAT car section, you won't have to make any arguments yourself. However, you will be expected to understand the arguments made by the passages you read. The first thing you should understand is that all cars passages have a main argument or thesis. You can think of this as, what is the point of this passage? What is the author trying to convey to you? And this main argument or thesis is extremely important to understand. You might have heard from friends before who have done well in the MCAT car section that your goal in reading the passage is to understand the main idea of the passage. And that's correct in many ways. There's a lot of questions you can get right on the MCAT car section simply by understanding the main argument of the passage. Now, to help you understand this, when you read a car's passage, you should understand that the text can be broken down into three different components. The first is background. Background sentences are pretty straightforward. They essentially set up the situation. They would be introducing facts, statements that can't be argued with, just describing the situation for you. Next, you have claims or the main idea. You can think of these as many arguments that support the main argument. So that means that each paragraph can be thought of as having a claim or a main idea. And all of these small claims will add up together to make up the main argument or thesis of the passage. Now, it's important for you to understand that claims are not like background. Background is just describing the situation, setting up the stage for the passage. And background sentences are facts. They cannot be debated. This is in comparison with claims. Claims are debatable. So an example of a claim would be, yogurts are good for you. That's actually an example of a pretty weak claim because it's not very convincing if someone just tells you that yogurts are good for you. Someone could come up with a stronger claim like, yogurts are probiotics that prevent you from contracting diseases, right? That would be a stronger claim. But the idea here is that in both cases, the statement, uh, yogurts are good for you, it's not a fact, right? There are people that can argue that yogurts are good for you. And people can also argue the opposite, that yogurts are bad for you. That's why it's a claim. Now, because claims are debatable, the passage writer is going to provide evidence or examples to support the claim. So that's essentially the last component of Carr's passages, evidence or examples. Now, when you're reading a Carr's passage, it's good to understand these three components of a Carr's passage. So that way, when you're reading the text, you can think about, okay, what am I reading? Is this background information? Is this a claim? Or is this evidence or examples? Now, when you compare these different types of texts, some are, of course, more important than others. Background information is pretty straightforward. So you will get some questions on these sentences, and usually these are going to be foundations of comprehension questions. So just asking, what did the passage say? Claims or main idea sentences, these are the most important in Carr's passages because a lot of the Carr's questions for both reasoning within and beyond the text require you to understand the claims being made by the passage. Evidence and examples are also important, but not as important as claims or main ideas. You will get questions asking you to be able to explain what is the purpose of different parts of the text. And it's quite common for there to be questions along the lines of why was X mentioned in the passage? And if X is an evidence or example, then the answer is almost always to support whatever claim it is associated with. Okay, so now that we understand the three components of Carr's passages, let's take a look at an actual example. So here we have a paragraph and we're going to go through this sentence by sentence. So first we have, with the exception of Golden Age Greece, which for a short time was inspired by the power of ideas, the world has so far been led by individual leaders who have risen and established organizations around themselves. This first sentence is background. If you read the sentence, you realize that it's a fact. 
there's nothing to debate about the sentence. It's just saying that if you look at history, most countries have been led by individual leaders, with the exception of Greece at one point in time. So next, we have such leadership weakens society by allowing the individual physical consciousness to flourish at the expense of its evolution towards something greater. This sentence is a claim. You can see it's essentially criticizing the leadership with an individual, right? And that can certainly be debated. This passage is claiming that an individual leader is bad for society. But certainly there are others who would claim that's not the case, that individual leaders are good for society. Next, viable and sustainable leadership in the 21st century can be built only upon the basis of rational universal truths. This is another claim. So if you think about it in the last sentence, the author was saying that individual leaders are bad. So now they're saying that good leadership requires rational universal truths. Again, this is debatable, which is why this is a claim. Finally, the last sentence, the spread of democratic values throughout the world is a result of human consciousness evolving from the individual physical to the rational universal, and the United Nations is an institution embodying the ideas of that evolution. This last sentence is an example, right? In the last sentence, the author was making a claim about what you need in order for society to be successful and evolve. This last sentence is providing an example of that with the United Nations that is going to allow democratic values to spread in the world. Okay, so here you can see an example with claim, background, and evidence. And this is something you want to try to keep in mind as you're reading through Carr's passages.